<laughs> we know this things that could shift. Did your parents recommend therapy or did you choose to go into therapy? Oh, this is a whole other conversation. Yeah. They were never. Yeah, um, I, just, I gotta ask because that fast. Not that. Okay, so not that my parents don't know what mm-hmm. therapy is, don't are opposed to it or anything, but it will never be on the forefront mm-hmm. of their mind to be like, hey, have you considered therapy? Did you ever see any of my posts about therapy or folks getting therapy or help or anything like yes. that at that time? Yes. Was that encouraging for you? Um, it was. I think it gave me more comfort. Oh. Um, just to kind of be like a little reassuring. I'm always I'm always you know? surprised when I hear these stories. Just a little like, reassuring, like okay, because uh-huh. you get nervous. Because first of all, it's a whole other relationship you're building with this new random person. Mm-hmm. By the way, it was virtual. I don't mm-hmm. like it. better so i like today i didn't even work out today but what i probably should do is spend time stretching and rolling and maybe that's what i need to do, do work and then sit and in the i don't want to work out today i'm feeling like not today i'm oh, on the regular oh, oh. that's what you need to start doing how do you warm up what's your warm up blah let's you get to the intro hey what's up it's your boy juice jones creates Back with another episode of Mental Health Monday. We're here talking to my friend who's basically a social worker, but not a social worker because the school doesn't drop the ball, but does not the point of the conversation. How are you? How's the trip coming in? Tell the people about what it is that you do. I do. We talked about what you did with the kids. Hey, what are we talking about now? Yeah, this is the intro with the kids. So tell me about what you do with the kids. Oh, what I do with the kids. Yeah. Hi, when do I give my name? No, just call your name. Hey, this is what I do with the kids. I do with the, hey, y'all. Do with the kids. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. I am an early learning specialist at a mm-hmm. Head Start program for children of lower income families and needs. Okay. What area do you work in? I'm in PG County, Maryland. Okay. What does it mean to be from PG County? Well, I'm not from. You live in. I don't live in either. You don't live in? Nah. Really? But don't the line is right there. You used to live in? Nah. I've really? always lived in Montgomery County. I'm a Montgomery County babe. But oh. the line is right there. Okay. The I'm li- sorry. Where I'm from, Montgomery like, County, the like, line's like, right I there. I feel like I was about to cross a line calling you that day. Because I'm from PG and Montgomery. You guys are very, hey, we um, like that. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Shout out to the DMV. I represent the DMV since so they had Zach. Mm hmm. Um, but I'm from Montgomery oh County. No, please don't die. In God's terms. Okay, okay. Yeah, cool. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm from Montgomery County, serving PG County. Mm-hmm. Um, that's where most of my life is for real, for real. Yeah. Like my family, my people, what I do mm-hmm. is in PG County. Shout the line. Shout out to my mom. Shout, shout out to your brother. My brothers. Yeah. My brothers and my sister. How many, how many siblings you got now? I got three siblings. Okay. Yes. Did you guys do like a lunch or something like that? that yes, day? we did. That was adorable. I know. The line is so cute. I look the youngest, but I'm the oldest. <laughs> <laughs> and the most childish. Clay, it's a fan. Oof. But yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's a little bit of what I do. I actually work directly with the teachers on best practices in the classroom. What are on the best classroom practices? environment. Um, how to communicate with families. Mm-hmm. Um, lesson planning. How to do observations of children so you know what to focus on. Mm-hmm. Intentional planning. Intentional teaching. Mm-hmm. Um... We're very big on the environment being a part of learning. How do you define environment? That's your space that you're in, your safe space, your classroom, but that's also the world that we live in. And those can be all of that. Yeah. Um, so we're not just confined to the classroom and the seat that you sit in. So yes, I did pre-K teaching for a few years. Mm-hmm. Um, got into the Head Start program as an education coach. I've been there for five years what was your time like there currently now like what do you feel you learned from the program um first of all i didn't even know what head start was to begin with um what was your assumption of what head start was versus what you learned that the organization is actually about so i knew that we were serving children that's what i knew i know they were going to be in class i knew i would be um well, in my role that I'll be supporting teachers and supporting the children. Mm-hmm. What I did not know was that it was low income families. Okay. Um, we also provide them other services as such 
uh, families with therapy, families that need housing, families that need food, supplies and stuff like that as well. Not necessarily in my position, but they have other people and other departments to help with that. So technically the framework from what social work looks like. Boom. Okay. Then it is. Did you know this going in or did you figure that out? I did not know this going in. Uh Um, And social work had always been in the back of my mind. Uh, How so? Um, like any examples of Because I was like, okay, I wanted school story. I never uh, walked for graduation. I don't know if you knew that. Really? I did not walk. Wait, did we walk the same year? No, I think you year before. I was 2012. Yes. You were 2013? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I didn't walk. Um, and I was like, one day I was like, dang, I took that away from my parents for real. <laughs> was there a reason that they you did, didn't walk? I don't like graduations. All right. You got to explain that to me. I don't like graduations either, but I do know I do know what belongs to my parents versus what belongs to me. So also your relationship with your parents are different. Yes. Yeah. Um, I didn't walk because first I don't care for graduations, period. Mm-hmm. Did I have a big connection with Catholic? Not really. I went. I worked. I did my school. I mm-hmm. went home. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I was just like, well. I finished yeah. and that's it yeah. and then my mom was talking my dad was talking and I was like dang y'all really didn't get to see me walk I was like alright bet I'll make a promise to you you'll see me walk on stage in one of these days mm-hmm. I didn't know when that day was one of these one of these days <laughs> one of these days <laughs> I didn't know if or when it would happen, uh, but I do say when I make a promise, I don't play. When I make a promise, I'll make it happen. Is that so African of you or is that so Jamaican of you? Which one does that belong to? I stand in my word both, uh-huh. period. That's both? Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. <laughs> I'm listening. Um, so I was in therapy. <clears throat> I was having a conversation with my therapist. For yourself. For myself. <laughs> okay. And So you're in therapy too now? Not now, but was. Was that beneficial for you? I think so. So my therapist and I had to talk about that because she's like, you know, you seem to kind of like have things together. Like, why are you here? I was like, I'm here because I don't have things together. Like, I'm trying to process what is my next step in life. And it's been difficult for me to figure that out. I always know what I'm doing. Uh-huh. And I felt like I was in a place of, I don't know what's next. And it's scary for me. You need a therapist for that? I'm not, I'm not questioning you. I'm mm-hmm. more questioning because therapy costs money. Yeah, right. But we get good insurance. You know, okay, okay. so the good insurance. Has to <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, okay. good insurance. It's mm-hmm. helpful. When you have good insurance, um, what's therapy like? Um, Just a cold play. It's a hey. We it's got a cold you, pay. Got you covered. I find someone that um, works for my schedule, and it's a copay per session. And if I'm going every other week, I'm paying like fifty dollars a month. Oh, yeah. that is beautiful. Yeah. Okay. So I took advantage of it at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, you sure, get into the... Back then, because you said at the time, like, things have changed. Well, <laughs> seeing as I've been getting bills from LabCorp, <clears throat> there's some phone calls that need to be made. Really? <laughs> Who knows? You know, things change. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Every year. Uh-huh. They be sneaking up on you. They let Obama go and everything. Oh. Like, yeah, no, I got you. I got you. No, I got you. I got you. Why? That's, that's vicious. So have I been into therapy since mm-hmm. then? No. But I was able to process a lot of why I was feeling the way I was feeling. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm very solution-based. Like, okay, if I'm complaining about this, what's my answer? Like, what am I I going to do to get the answer? So I can't just sit here and wallow in my sorrows. I got to make moves. So you weren't suffering from, like, depression, anxiety, any of those things? No. It was just my life doesn't have direction right now and I need someone to chat with. Yes. I'm, I want to ask you two more questions because I think that's fascinating. Why not turn to your friends? Um, I'm a big person that believes everybody's going through something and sometimes I don't want my burden to be anybody else's burden. So although we do have we do have these conversations, mm-hmm. um, I felt like my therapist who also did social work and was also a licensed social worker mm-hmm. was able to guide me in a different direction that they may not be able to guide me. Yeah. Um, with background, with education, just her knowledge and her experience. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, sometimes you just got to get a total outside person in view mm-hmm. on like what's going on in your life. So you at least allow your friends to confide in you and vice versa. Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay. Oh, yeah. So you just wanted to give the folks a break for a little bit. Yes. And then you go in and you're having conversations and then you're like, they ask you, 
Uh, why do you think you're the way you are? Mm -hmm. And that's when you go down the whole rabbit hole of, wow, well, I was raised like this. And <laughs> my parents divorced when I was this. Yeah. And my father is like this. And that's why. And then you're like, hey, everything connects. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think the world looked different for you after therapy? I think therapy helped me understand that it's okay to not know mm -hmm. what's next all the time. Okay. Um, you cannot always be prepared for everything. I'm very like, I'm thinking of 50 different ways to escape this room. If anything happens, mm -hmm. I'm ready and I know what's next. Yeah. You're not going to be able to do that all the time. And it's okay. Okay. You bring stress to yourself. Or you brought stress to yourself from your experience. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I admit it. Oh, it's stressful. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. um, so, like, it's okay to not know, but also it's big. It's big of you to, in that time, still make strides to get to where you want to be. Okay. Because if you don't move, you don't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. Or if you don't move, that might be the place that you we're looking for depending on who you are depending on who you are yeah, this is you, place you're looking for you, you not the place to move. Yeah, yeah, I had yeah. to go <laughs> I was uncomfortable okay everything was getting on my nerves I already knew <laughs> <laughs> that it was time yeah so yeah therapy helped me with that for sure okay and I'm grateful for her then she had no time for me for real y'all oh. and then it was time to go the breakup happened well <laughs> More so, though, she kind of said it to you. Do you, you don't seem like you need therapy. Heavily, right? So that's not that she didn't have time for you. That was her letting you go. She was like, oh, you got to fly. Well, her schedule. Uh-huh. All of a sudden, that booked up. Too busy for you? And was it that she didn't want to see me? Yeah, that's she didn't even have a talk with you. Like, what's going Why on? you ain't sent her a follow-up email? It's cool, because it wasn't that serious. But I love you, and I like you, and I hope you're doing well. You didn't want to hit her with a hey, girl? Not as cool, but maybe later. I'll let you know I graduated. <laughs> when you up, it's really okay. I'll let you know I graduated. She be proud of me. Okay. Yes. Okay. No, no, keep going. I'm here now. I'm sorry. I just, I had to use bringing up that therapy and I said, like, Ooh, I have an itch. I'd like to scratch. No, I feel you. Yeah. Ask away. Um, but yeah, after that, I was like, okay, time to make things happen. What am I going to school for, for real? Mm -hmm. And so social work was on the list. Um, education was on the list. Mm -hmm. Early childhood was on the list and psychology was on the list. It was a lot of things. Um, as you know, my background is early childhood education, so I've always been in it. Okay. I love young no children. Until now. Oh, yeah. when I know. Okay. I love children. Mm -hmm. I don't. I, mean, I say I don't care to work with adults. I mean, I say oh, it's okay to say that. You have a preference. You know, yes. what demographic you're looking yes. to work with. But working with children also means you work with the family. So. Okay. Do you treat those things as two separate things, or Ooh. how do you go about that? Because now this goes into the work that you've done for the five years that you work for that company mm -hmm. versus the work that you're doing now, working on your master's. So I would say you're working on your master's right now, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. So what would I say? I would say mm, initially mm -hmm. first getting into early childhood, I'm just thinking straight children. Mm -hmm. um, What's the age group? Uh, two to five, but I always did fours and fives. That's okay. my heart. I love that age. Okay. Um, they that speak to you. you love yeah. Right, they talk to you. They're funny. They uh -huh. understand your sarcasm. They give you all the tea. Everything. Yeah. And then they give you advice too. And then mm -hmm. they're so like they're moldable, but they also have opinions, and I love the back and forth. Like that's fun for me. Um, love that age. It's so great. <laughs> Y'all can have it too. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> Are they really terrible? Okay. okay. Y'all can have it too. <laughs> I love them though, but I love my fours and fives. I love the mm -hmm. conversation, the back and forth. Um, just seeing them learn yeah. and how excited they get. I love that. So initially, I looked at it separate, but as you're working with the children, you learn, okay, this child may need extra support in X, Y, and Z. How do I communicate that with the family? Mm hmm then that's a whole other thing because it's not just I'm dealing with the child directly. It's now what's my communication with the family and what communication style works best for that family. Um, how do I enter this conversation? Mm -hmm. I'm not just going to say, 
your child can't do X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. They need help. That's, that's not. It's not. It's not. It's not going to work. It's not. That's messing so up you, the you relationship. Imagine yourself doing it like that, and you'd be like, oh, "I got to reel it in." Oh, for sure. For yeah. some. For some. For some families, yeah. Because I'm like, sometimes you're really like, did y'all not see what's going on here? Mm-hmm. But you never know what the family's home is like. The home life, you don't know. Mom is probably working 24-hour shifts. You just don't really know. So you're figuring that out as well. Yes. So um, are families forthcoming with you about their situations or they tend to be private? Most tend to be private until they feel they can trust you. And then... What's the trust test? I know there's a trust test. Um, is there a trust home. test? I'm just myself. I don't know if there's a trust test. No, no, I mean for them. Like, like when you could tell you tested me today. Um... Yeah. They might, like, just start saying little things like, oh, uh, me and dad separated. They might just say, are we no longer live together? Mm-hmm. Might just say a little bit thing like that. Um... Random family things happen Or I notice that he doesn't do this anymore What's wrong with my child He doesn't want to come to school Or he always wants to be at school Just random little things They start to talk to you Instead of just dropping the child off Mm, And leaving The more time the parents are spending that lets you know, okay, yes. the bonds getting better. Yes. I bet. Um, and then you can be careful with that too sometimes because you're like, okay, this is a great period. We can talk and we can chit-chat. But you also have to protect yourself in those moments too. Um, you, you want that boundary of not being too familiar. Okay. If that makes any sense. Nah, you gotta, you you're gotta not calling me that. random times of the night, wow. early morning. Has that happened? It's happened. Okay. It's um, work for you, like, fam, my working hours. Working hours. Yeah. Boundaries are rough. We were you just having that conversation boundaries? at work. I have great boundaries. Okay. Now. Oh. Oh, the growth. <laughs> the growth. You really learn about yourself. Okay. Um, I'm a giver. I'm a lover. I'm a. I'm going to do whatever it is to help and support my people. Mm-hmm. That's what I am. Um, but then you get drained after a while. You realize, wow. I need to pour into myself. So what does pour into yourself look like? That means if I don't do calls after seven, Mm -hmm. I don't do calls after seven. Okay. That means if I need to say no and I know I'm going to be drained and I can't do it, then it's no. And there's just no. Mm -hmm. I don't have to give a full explanation on how crazy my life is. And you're lucky you even got a response from me <laughs> because sometimes it's how it is. Did you used to over explain back in the day? Oh yeah. Oh. Because you feel that you're like, Oh my goodness, I want to be helpful. Yeah. I just can't do it. But like, this is why and I'm so sorry. But why am I apologizing to you? Yeah. You need me. Yeah. Oh, it's sad. <laughs> that move like you I me mean, <laughs> so yeah you learn about yourself too mm-hmm. and what's healthy for you and it can be uncomfortable yeah um some people may not take to your boundaries well mm-hmm. it's either they shift with you or they say it's not for them yeah. then they can find somebody or something else and that's okay do you well i don't want to say feel because these are facts in your line of work do you ever end up giving the parents homework versus the kids Yes. Okay. So sometimes coping strategies, use this at home. If it's bedtime, deadlines, um, working with the children for a certain amount of minutes mm-hmm. at the table doing an activity. Mm-hmm. You might start at one minute, try to increase the time every time, Do you and see what happens. Ground rules like, hey, you can't be on the cell phone when you're doing this. You can't multitask. The focus does have to be the kid and the assignment. We try our bestest. <laughs> <laughs> we try our best this yeah we really try it out here man yeah now we're not necessarily asking you to record in the home so we don't know mm-hmm. but we do have a policy that when you come into the classroom the phones are away okay at least that okay we hope they carry that into reading books with their children mm-hmm. um talking to their children sitting at the table yeah. with their children at like meals. A big thing that that doesn't happen much yeah spending time mm-hmm. there's a lot of um tv and I have yes and while I'm not totally opposed moderation moderation and balance yeah yeah moderation and balance every time you close your eyes I could see you going back to the moment of these conversations you've had to have Okay. Because I, and one and I understand like again single mom mm-hmm. working however long of a shift 
your child's been in care, they've been at school, mm-hmm. they come home, you're just like, yeah, bathe, dinner, watch TV so you get tired, and go to bed. And for you as a parent, that's you already at the end of your rope for the day, for real, for real. Yeah. So I, I hear them. I try to have an understanding and I don't have an expectation on being perfect day one. Mm-hmm. Um, but of yourself or of the parent? Of the parent. What's your expectation of you? My expectation is to be as open and honest as possible. Mm-hmm. Do you see how good you look on camera? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I try to be open as honest as possible um, while being mindful mm-hmm. of how sensitive these conversations may be. Okay. Do you bring, do you show up as yourself or do you show up as who you think you need to be? I always show up as myself. Okay. Because I know there's folks who prefer the latter. I show up as myself because I'm not perfect and I have days. Okay. And when I was teaching in the classroom, my children knew my days. And that gave them Mm -hmm. the understanding of, oh, I have days too when I'm not happy. I'm upset. I'm still here. I still have to come. Mm -hmm. I'm upset and I may maneuver differently, but it's okay. I'm in a safe space. I'll be all right. Do you allow yourself to call out for work? Yes. Okay. I just got uh, awarded with the gold medal at work for PTO Princess. That's what they call me. What does that mean? That means I use my PTO when I'm always somewhere. Good job. Period. <laughs> <laughs> they just awarded me with that. Mm-hmm. Because there was a time where, I mean, I love what I do. So I'm just like, you just go. And sometimes you're like, wait, did I take a break for myself? All these kids mm-hmm. going on summer vacation. What is mine? Yeah. It's important to reset. Do you ever... <laughs> Do you ever look at who you used to be and feel proud about who you're allowing yourself to become? Let's say that one more time. Do you ever look at who you used to be and be proud of who you're allowing yourself to become now? Yes. I love that I'm so much better with boundaries. Mm-hmm. I love that I'm pouring into myself like I pour into others. I think that's big for me. Yeah. Because I'm very much, like I said, you need me, I'm there. You need a phone call, you need me in person, whatever it is, mm-hmm. I make sure I'm there. And I'm like, am I doing that for myself? Because yeah. I'm not always okay. And it's okay to not always be okay, but then that means I need myself in that moment. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, for sure. Big strides. Okay. In that department. Okay. For me, I'm like, I'm learning so much about you as someone who knew you. But before you showed up, I was like, look. You got to let go of who she used to be Mm. and be open for, like, all the new versions of who she is now. I'm still cool, (laughs) y'all. I'm still cool, and I'm still a nice, beautiful, kind individual. Okay. That's never changed. So, when it comes to your work and the kids and the parents, what would you say your work is about? So now I work more closely with the teachers, but in my mind, my goal is always the children. What do the children need? Yeah. Um, that crosses my mind 24-7. So that if that means my teachers aren't okay, that means my children will be okay. Mm-hmm. So what do I need to give them so that they can give to the children? Mm-hmm. Um, yes. Because, again, we're working with low-income families. What's the pay like? Ooh, education. I was going to say, is that is that a rude it's question? Right. Oh. It's not the best. Uh-huh. I'm not going to say it's the worst. Are they at least paying off your student loans? Does that count towards paying off student loans? Ooh, yes, it does. Okay. Which is why you stay where you at, y'all. I have a plan. How much did you ask for? 10 years or something like that? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. So, I have like 20 payments left for undergrad mm-hmm. you gotta restart for grad isn't that crazy why I don't know give me the cover <laughs> I gotta whisper that you whispering when the, the microphone's right oh, here is hilarious <laughs> I gotta whisper that <laughs> the cover <man. laughs> so it does count because it is a non-profit organization mm-hmm. um, so it does count towards the qualifying payments for student loan forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Yes, at least. So. Okay. Well, that that sounds like a big benefit because, like, um, how much longer do you have left? 
for school? Let's say student loans and then the program itself to run its course. So, because it's like a 10 year run you have to have for all your debt to be forgiven. Yes, so let uh, me see. Why is that? 520 payments, uh, how many is that in years? 12, so a year or some, a so year or some. 18 is like a year and a half. So, I'm gonna have a year or some yeah. for undergrad. So, basically, a year and eight months is what you have left. Yes, yeah, and then. When I start paying, mm -hmm. I feel this one over there. Yeah, yeah. That will kick in for grad payments. Oh, because you have to take out some. Because I have to take out loans for grad. Because you nah, know, makes sense. I don't got but how much that. is? Do they pay off your grad too, or only undergrad is what they forgive? I believe grad too. Okay. Yes, I believe okay, grad too. I was gonna say. I hope if I'm not, I'm right stuck. Questions. How much you got? Too much. Was grad more expensive than undergrad? Yes. But I was. What? Was it? Yeah, I you think so. You taking expensive school. But, I, crazy to but me. I got some scholarship for undergrad. Because mm -hmm, you're smart. Am I? You got the scholarships. Mm -hmm, yeah. Yeah, you got the proof. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, at least with that. Mm -hmm. um, now, let me be honest, y'all. Have I checked to be like, how many students I got? Yeah. No, because in my head, I'm never paying. <laughs> so, <laughs> do I care that much? No. Found that in my soul. I'm still going on vacation. <laughs> no stopping me. Yes. Yeah. 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 No, so that. maybe after this soul. chat, I'll yeah. check later and be you like, look, "Wow, I haven't been here in a while." <laughs> What's my password? What's my username? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yes. I had that, that moment two weeks ago. Yeah. And you're like, what did I do? Yeah. But currently, I am happier, so we'll keep it there. I'm not going to look at the number. Do you think my company should do work with your company? Ooh. From what you've seen content-wise. On the spot question. I mean, I can edit out if you want me to. But no, I think that's, that's like this year. Well, have you, you've been aware of the work that I do, but have you been aware of how long I've been doing it? No. Okay. Actually. And I haven't been aware of like the depths. Did you want to ask work. any questions? I feel like this is a... a yeah, I can interview. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. It's a conversation. Um, See, now we're going to have to start having more phone calls after this. Yeah, this is yeah. cool. Okay, so let's start. What work do you do? Um, so, Get Home Safe does mental health and wellness outreach. Yeah. We create content around the subjects of depression, anxiety, ADHD, and suicidal ideation. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the demographic... It's more older, and when I say older, when I looked at the numbers between YouTube, Instagram, I never looked at the numbers on TikTok, we touch around 23 age range all the way till about 55. Nice. Okay. Which was a surprise. I was like, oh, we nice. got 55 in here and stuff. I was like, all right, that's a wide range. Um, at first, in the pandemic, because we did mental health outreach in 2019, that's when everything started. And we created mental health post on monday so the title mental health monday was the original name of the first campaign we did okay which we posted every monday um having moments of vulnerability what are we going through and it would be like a week update on hey i'm not feeling it uh -huh. what does me not feeling it look like what is that doing for me and i had two of my partners that i was doing it with in coop and ryan okay. now we broke up uh, mid-pandemic, so it was like 2020, 2021, we broke up. And we broke up because my folks got exhausted of the platform, and I took it very personally that my friends weren't being honest on being exhausted. Mm. Because it's like, I can't run a mental health platform, and the people next to me aren't letting me know when their rope is at their end. Because to me that goes against the whole concept of doing mental health yes. outreach because i'm very big on if you can't help the people next to you or you're not taking the people next to you into consideration are you really helping people mm -hmm. and how do you define help so if i can't help you and you my homie and you right there and i talk to you every day and yeah. i'm texting and i'm seeing your house burned down that's the equivalent of i never grab a bucket of water i never call 911 or I never do anything to help you when you're struggling. Now, my question is, do you feel as though, or do you know if they mm -hmm. felt that you should have known the way they were feeling? No. Okay. We, we had very open, okay. Okay. separate discussions. Okay, like if, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if, if I find out something, I don't make it 
a group discussion where like you're sitting in a chair, the yeah. lights on you, wearing a dark room, you don't get to see yes. us. No, <laughs> yeah, okay, that. okay, okay. That. And I told him, I was like, you know, it's not yeah. I'm disappointed that my friends at that time weren't able to let me know that they were struggling. Mm. So it's not I'm angry at you because you didn't let me know. It's I'm disappointed that in our friendship, I couldn't serve you better as a friend. Mm -hmm. And in the goals of what Get Home Safe was supposed to turn into, the people next to me were hurting in silence. That's the best way to put it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean it's major. You gotta you gotta understand who you are when you start a company or when you start doing things with people because like it's very easy to do all these amazing things and, and when you go into the room, the room doesn't feel amazing. Yeah. So you know about that since you enjoy the work that you do. Now since then we transitioned the platform from doing in person events and doing the posts on Monday around March in that first year of twenty nineteen. We turned it from Mental Health Monday to Get Home Safe. Get Home Safe is what our parties and events were called. Mm -hmm. And that's what this is now. So the okay. umbrella is Get Home Safe. And the shows are Mental Health Monday. Events that come out on Monday. Well, shows that come out on Monday. Now, the purpose of those shows, which has kind of changed the scope of what we're dealing with and what we're touching on. We were giving people permission to let folks know, hey, I'm dealing with a suicidal ideation and permission to get help and to look into therapy and what does reaching out for help look like. That's what the totality of the first year was about. And around that time, we got about a little bit under 70 people into therapy with the work that we did. And getting people into therapy doesn't mean you work with our therapist. It means we had events where people could shop for their therapist. So it'd be a party, someone shaking ass, someone eating a taco, someone taking a shot, and there would be lines of people shopping for their therapist in a corner. Wow. Yeah. And then when I saw how exhausted my team got and everything else and the pandemic started, I was like, I, how do I reapproach our outreach okay. and what does a representation of what mental health looks like? And how do I start to educate people in the things that I've learned in this mental health journey with the people that I've done work with professionally? Okay. So I was aware of mental health from about 2012 when I dated Nisha. That's mm -hmm. why I learned about all things mental health. Okay. 2012 until she passed away in 2018. Mm -hmm. And then 2018 was when I decided I'm going to start a mental health organization and I want to see can we help others in a way that I wasn't able to help my loved one during that time leading up to 2018. Mm -hmm. So then after we did shorts for the first year, and I say we, because there were people I was working with, they weren't permanent, okay. but they did help. So yes, you always got to yes. say the we, like, yes, hey, yes, you got to acknowledge all the yes. folks that helped you, right? We did shorts. TikTok was becoming a thing. I was starting to do the transition clothing things. And then I went from the clothing stuff, transitioning it, it into mental health tidbits that I had learned from the therapists I work with. And also from the experience of like, I started having people calling me for their like mental health emergencies who had therapists. I had people who like when they were having a breakdown, I would walk them through the breakdown and reel it in. But then I would follow up to be like, hey, did you schedule with your therapist? Hey, did you end up going to the hospital? Hey, how's your family dealing with yeah. it? Because when it comes to mental health, there's a disconnect of the person that's going through it. And people believe the person going through the thing isn't them going through the thing. Uh, but there's like, you know, on social media, there's like a parasocial relationship. Like you get upset when your star does something they're not supposed yes. to do. Unfortunately, that's kind of the experience for a lot of people when they're having a mental health breakdown of, oh, you should know better. And it's like, guys, we don't control the mental health breakdown. It's happening. It's happening. <clears throat> we don't get to dictate how the mental health emergency happens, but we do get to dictate what can we do for this person until they, back, they get back to being at a level that's okay yes. when it comes to mental health. And I realized... There needs to be more education, not on what is the person with anxiety and everything else going through, but we need to start having more open conversations on what was your experience with anxiety? What was your experience with depression? What was your experience with ADHD? What was your experience with a suicidal ideation? 
And then the other side is, what was your experience helping someone who was going through that? Mm. Do you remember what that was like? What did you do at the time? And then at the end of the interviews, what could you have done better? And what would be your advice for someone trying to help someone going through that? And then each person gets to tell their stories. And when they get to the end, they get to tell their, their advice from their perspective, while also bringing in the opinion of the professionals in terms of therapists, mm-hmm. while bringing in the opinion of folks that work in a wellness community that do like yoga events or sound bowl events. And then that's what this is now. Wow. Yeah. So many transitions. A lot. <laughs> yeah, transitions. A lot a of lot. layers. Yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot. Like I just, on um, the YouTube side, which I've been building up, I have this thing called housekeeping because I realize... And I don't advertise it too hard on the social media side because what I do is in everyone's cup of tea. Mm. So I try to be careful where I don't spam you guys with the amount of information and the interviews that I have. Because, like, you see how many cameras this is, right? On a weekly basis, I can average, like... 10 interviews Mm. then after 10 interviews I'm sitting on 10 episodes worth of content and I sometimes balance things out because I don't want what if you're having a good day you're drinking tequila eating some tacos and then my clip comes up and it's something dark you're like man right in front of my margarita bro you feel me so it's like there does have to be a balance for people that aren't of this world yeah yeah so that's what my org does and what we've accomplished so right now we're sitting at like 250 folks in therapy with the work that we've done. And now I'm no longer counting the people that we get to in therapy. Now my concern is I, for the folks that are in therapy who stayed with therapy and the folks who aren't no longer in therapy, did they get what they're looking for? Are they looking for something new or did they need to take a break? And how do I facilitate a better environment for the people who are no longer getting the help that may not be needed or are taking a break because either it costs too much or life isn't going in the direction that they want it to go. So would you say you are, you and your team, I'm going to say you and your team, mm-hmm. are like that liaison support system between the therapy needs mm-hmm. and the mental breakdowns, episodes, whatever have you? Facilitators. Facilitators. We're great facilitators yeah. because right now, what we're moving into and the people who I'm bringing in because since that breakup happened with the team I was sensitive about who should we allow to be a part of the platform because Mm. unfortunately you have to be careful like I've had people that have clothing brands from Baltimore that wanted to be a part of Get Home Safe but I asked some very poignant questions hey Do you have a domestic violence case that I need to know about? Because you can't have that and dealt with that and be a part of that. And I have what you have going on included in the makeup of what Get Home Safe has been. That's not going to work. That's not going to reflect well. And even after you take care of that, I can't allow you to be a part of the platform because of what you've been associated with. Because... I don't think a victim would be okay with wanting to come and tell their story or confide in me as a person if I allow you to be a part of what's going on. Now, does that mean we can't be homies and stuff like that? We can be homies if you have changed behavior and you've been working on it. You get what I'm saying? But if not that, if you're telling me you're doing one thing, but your actions are showing me another, I can't help you. And the reason I knew about that is because me and this person was supposed to do a collab, just as an example. Mm -hmm. And I gave the money for the collab to happen. The collab got canceled. I told them, hey, we can't do it. They're supposed to send me back the money. They had a mental health breakdown, then they got locked up. So now you're dealing with two things, right? Yes. Mental health emergency, they got locked up, but they also weren't handling themselves correctly. They came back to me and they were like, hey, man, you know, I'm back, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, fam, you had your mental breakdown. Not your responsibility. You got locked up. Things happen. You have my money. This was a year and a half ago. You're not leading with the money that is mine. Let's just call that a breakup fee Mm -hmm. and leave it at that. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, no, I'm going to get it back to you, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, look, do whatever you got to do. Promise I got it to you in a month. Guess what happened? 
Money never came. I said, bet. It's a breakup fee. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking for it for real. I already knew. If that's the cost of protecting the brand and what we've done so far, then that's a price that's, you know, you should be okay with being willing to pay yes. because you're going to make that money. And I've made that money back yes. 10 times mm-hmm. over. So it's just like, no, you really got to pick and choose what you put yourself in position for when you start things. And these are things that I really have to keep in mind. So like now I have a doctor that I'm going to be working with and Dr. Jones, she's a pediatrician, amazing person. Um, She's actually going to be one of the newer hosts of get home safe. And a lot of interviews that we're doing, I have like a couple of tables that I'm shopping for. Cause I'm like, if we do an interview that has more than two people, I'd like for there to be a focus point where we could just sit at a table and talk instead of us being like rode all the way down the wall. Yes. I don't want to make the room too big. Yes, I want to yes. like find reasons to like bring us into yes. what's going in, well, what's going on. And then I'm, I'm an 80, 20 person. So 80% of what I do is content okay. that is built off the people that I'm doing work with, the work that we've done so far, the work that we'd like to accomplish. And are we sticking to the things that we say we're doing? Mm-hmm. I'm really big on that. And then 20%, hey, what am I doing in the community or in the event space? And who am I working with that aligns with the values of what Get Home Safe is? And are they being consistent? And am I being consistent? Are we really meeting the people where they are? So that's like an example of what Get Home Safe has become now. I hope that answers your question. That is yeah. layered. Yeah, it's a lot. Very layered. Yeah. Do you have a vision? And you probably have already done this. I'm not fully sure. Mm-hmm. Have you worked specifically with men in this space? Well, the fine worked with men. Um, as far as mental health conversations, um, I don't know. Because I always think about the families and we're so communicative with mom and sometimes I'm like hey Mm -hmm. pops is here too and pops is also going through things and transitioning through things and learning their child and trying to figure out how to show for themselves and the family and I have a dad story for you Hmm. so one of my boys Josh whose interview is actually coming out this Monday I don't know when this interview is coming out but I know his interview is coming out Monday Mm mm-hmm the 19th of August. Okay. We're going to date this. Okay. So when this comes out, it's the yeah. 19th of August, right? <laughs> and he's been a great dad. He has four kids, but he hasn't been a great partner. Mm-hmm. And he went to therapy for it. And, you know, he found out a lot of root causes behind things. And he realized there were a lot of things that he could have done better, but he didn't come here for pity. He came here to talk about the benefits of therapy. And I've known Josh for like, 10 years work together love josh josh ever needs anything you know he can pick up the phone just let me know what's up um and he told me about a story of going to school and as a dad he would go to school to pick up his kids and the kids know who he is and the school knows who he is and then when i say the kids i mean his son's friends because <laughs> it'd be crazy yeah if his sons they know who he is yeah right and they kept giving him messages to give to his partners and he was like, why are you giving me messages to give to my partners when I'm a parent and I'm right here and I could do the thing that you need to yes. get done? So to go back to your point that you brought up with the fathers, there's a lot of community habits that excludes men naturally in spaces that a lot of women are like education, Mm -hmm. like hospitals, like, hey, sick day, picking up the kids or when there's an emergency, which parent gets called Mm -hmm. first. But he's always made it a point to be a good dad and be available, show to all the report card meetings, the parent meetings. So things like that in terms of men don't receive enough from society, but there's a lot of history that plays into that, too. So it's kind of half and half. So it's like, even if you start doing the right thing or the things that's expected of you as a parent, that doesn't mean the community and the environment is going to appreciate the effort that you're giving. Because no one's really being asked to be treated special, but a lot of people are being asked to be treated accordingly as a great father. Uh And a lot of that isn't really being met also. These are things to keep in mind. Yeah. So to answer your question, I do have the talks and the interviews yeah. that are coming out. But, you know, I think that's another thing that I see get home safe moving into the space of parents. So, like, 
I've always wanted to be in the education space when it comes to parents, education, kids, but I don't have enough time to work with kids, so I'm not going to say, oh, I'm qualified just because I've done a couple events with kids. Mm -hmm. I'd rather work with people who are pediatricians, people who are social workers that work with teachers. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? What's missing from the space? And can get home safe, really make money from doing this in the space, too, because we're not doing this for free. Yes. These cameras cost money. Yes, the edits cost money. The lights cost money. And if we want to do bigger, better things or more things that show appreciation to the community of men and women or they them, then we have to have resources that pour into the events that we do or people that are willing to cover costs so we can keep this going because like adults are just bigger kids. Yes. And kids need appreciation, including our parents. They're just a bigger version of what a kid once was, and that kid is still with them. So, you know, keeping those things in mind. Okay. Nice. A lot of detailed conversation. You, a lot of avenues. Yeah. Did that, did that give more it makes clarity? Sense, yes. to like, yeah. Yes. And I think my work takes longer, too. So right now I'm working on three shows in Mental Health Monday that comes out on Monday or Tuesday, depending on the load that I have the week before. Okay. Then you have In My Shoes. That's the concept where people be cleaning their shoes and telling yes. their stories. Okay, yeah. I share that a little bit. I don't know how the public feels about it. I feel like it's a big idea, but it also comes to, hey, I don't want to bombard you guys with too much information mm -hmm. and too many shows. Because like... I don't want everyone to just be interested and be like, oh, it looks nice. Let me stare because then you kind of fall into the social media trap where you don't know what you're watching, but you spend a whole bunch of minutes and hours. Yeah. And I don't want people yeah. to feel like they're getting empty calories when they watch the content. And then you have housekeeping and housekeeping, which I didn't finish. That's just a check in on everything I'm dealing with business wise or relationship wise, because like there's a lot of juggling hats or a lot of different concepts that are coming out or that haven't come out. Like I had somebody ask me last week for an episode that I dropped uh, on Friday. I noticed the content for mental health Monday has been inconsistent. You know, I just want to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, when you go from having a team of like six to seven people, editors included, and now it's just you, you schedule all the interviews you do all the edits and edits is a very large word edits aren't I just shoot and I edit one time and it's done each process of an edit can be 45 minutes or it can be 9 hours mm -hmm. I had a close to 9 hours moment on Friday for that episode that dropped I like stayed up all night I shot it got it out edited it and I was like ooh we gotta add music and we gotta add b-roll and then I went to this website art grid that I have a membership for to get b-roll but then I was like ooh I gotta get these clips from these references so people know who I'm talking about that I've done work with on a professional setting got those clips now you gotta wait for the download you wait on Google Drive you realize you don't have short clips of these people, so now you're downloading large files. Oh, so Lord. something that should take like a minute or two is now taking four hours just on the download side. And then when you put things on social media, you got to be careful about your quality because social media between Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, it compresses your stuff. Yes. So it's like you're dealing with large files, small files. You make sure the music that you use is licensed and it's not going to have any of your accounts striked or taken down. It's All on one person. All on one person. All on one person. And then you're doing that with three different shows. Jeez. So whatever, whatever takes long already, you have to do that times three for three different concepts. Mm -hmm. And most people would be like, why don't you focus on one thing? Because that one thing might be getting it done. It's like, yeah, but... Once you have an idea and you start the other thing and people are interested in it, you don't want to put that down for too long because we're in the generation that moves on quickly from something. So, yeah, that's that's uh, everything I got going on. Sheesh. Yeah, and that's not even talking about my nine to five. That's just what this has become. So all of this mm -hmm. and a nine to five, mm -hmm. is your nine to five at all related to the work that you do here? Hell no. Hell no. Okay. You got you to gotta be able to get away. Yeah. If you, if you put something in front of yourself too much, it's going to wear you down. And yes. you don't, you don't want to create opportunities to fall out of the love, out of love, love. with the thing yes. you're already in love with. Yes. So you true. get what I'm saying? So, like, I'm very big on 
whatever like if I could just make full time money from this I would, would mm -hmm. but I'm very passionate about tech when it comes to IT and cloud architecture that's like okay. my main focus but right now let people go so I'm just like I am work my little security job yeah. make my money yeah. meet up with my folks when it's time for us to work on a couple of tech projects keep that resume building okay. as is and then go back to my, my business yeah so you're doing a lot. Yeah, I do a lot. You do a lot. I do a lot. And lot. I have a relationship, and my partner and I live together, and this is, yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot. How do you juggle all of this and showing up in your relationship? I don't. I don't show up in my relationships. What? You got to sacrifice us to come from somewhere. Your face looks so shocked when I said that right now. All right, all right. So here's what happened. That really says to me. <laughs> <laughs> um... You set the parameters for for what showing up looks like for you. Okay. So all of my friends know if you need me, call me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if not, text me and let me know what time would you like for us to get on the phone. Mm -hmm. I actually catch an attitude at this because this happens often. My bad. My thing keeps going against this artwork and it keeps making this weird noise with the chair. <laughs> it's like two balloons rubbing together. <laughs> But um, I'm really big. Everybody knows what my work schedule is, so they know when I'm at work. So if you call me and I'm at work, it needs to be an emergency. And if mm. it's not, it's just you had free time. You, you thought to call me. It's like I've been working the same job for like a year and a half mm -hmm. now. Why are you calling me at work? I don't call you at work. I yeah. say, when are you free so we can call? And when people don't have those proper boundaries, I just stop answering the phone. Because it's like, look, you guys know I have a lot going on. Yeah. Now, someone being busy, there's two kinds of busy. There's too busy to ever interact, to pick up the phone and call you back. And there's, hey, pick a time so we can talk. And I'll make sure whatever time I carved out for you, that's our time that no one will interrupt for about 45 minutes. What I'm hearing is mm -hmm. intentionality yeah. on your part. Major. I try. Right. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some people who fall through the cracks. And I'll make sure to get them five days later. I'll look at a text or I'll look at a DM. You remember when we were going back yes, and forth? Yes. That was a busy yeah, week for and me. And I understand because yeah. my brain. <laughs> and I don't do phone. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you be trying though. I try. You get back when it gets close to yes. the day. You're like, hey, I got you. Yes. Don't worry. I'm, I'm not. I'm not keeping it in show mind. Up. Right. <laughs> but I'm very big on. A lot of our friends are not considerate, and that's just the habit of our relationship and what we did and what we used to do, but it's okay to grow into a position of I've learned to be considerate of what my friends have going on. Let me pick this time and let's do it this way. Yes. So I have some friends who I'm super close with that have a lot going on, and they won't give me updates, and that's another pet peeve of mine. If you hit me up for the emergency and a month and a half later, we get on the phone and there's no update. There's no acting of the emergency happening or anything else. Should I allow myself to get worked up when shit's hitting the fan for you in real life? But when we get on the phone, there's no discussion on, hey, here's what happened. Yeah, I'm doing good now. If I feel I have to force questions of your humanity and what's going on in your life out of you, I then may have to start questioning not what value do I bring to the relationship, but how much of myself should I allow myself mm. to get caught up in your life that I've learned to care about as a friend? That self-reflection. Yeah. Or your part, not what they yeah, yeah. should be doing. That, that conversation is not for them. Yes. You feel me? Because they, yeah. they, they're going to roll that way anyway. Yeah. And I've voiced this out loud before, but yeah. you don't see change in behavior, man. Hey, be glad you got to see it. It's way worse if they hide it from you. Then you have an attitude like, why didn't you let me know? You yeah. feel me? That's why that's how I've learned to not take things personal. But to answer your question, I do make time for my friends and family. Like, But like, if they're not listening to, hey, he's at work at this time or this why he isn't available, but he's free on these days. If you're not trying to take advantage of the days that I tell you I'm free, then you're not really trying to take advantage of me. Yeah. And in our relationships, we're not there to serve each other. We're there to work with each other if we can. And if that doesn't work out, bet. I love you when I can. I got stuff to do. Yeah. Yeah. And other people to do it with, too. Life is moving. Yeah. Do you ever have moments like what I'm saying right now? I... I feel it's like not like reflecting right now. Yeah. the relationships I have with my friends. Mm -hmm. 
Did that strike some chords? And like yeah. how they, so for me, mm-hmm. everyone is kind of in a category. Okay. If that makes sense. Do the categories have names? So it, I, I don't really know. Okay. It might get names later. Is this but the first I know time that. About this? No. So I know they have categories. I just uh-huh. haven't named them. Okay. But I know that I have friends that I expect certain things from. For so example? If I'm in a 911 emergency mm-hmm. and I'm bugging or I need something immediately, I'm on a breakdown, I know who can handle that and be with me mm-hmm. and show up for me in those moments. Mm-hmm. Which is good. Um, Cuz those who can, you don't you don't have to guilt trip them. It's nah. like, I already know what you I already I, I knew what and you know what? Yeah. And that is fine and I accept you for who you are and I still love you. Yeah. I have my other friends where it's like, okay, we do the checkups, we do the are you okay, do you need support? Mm-hmm. It might not be as major mm-hmm. and as deep rooted but as that one, you know, mm-hmm. section of friends. But there's effort. But there's effort there. Yeah. Um, and we love each other still. Mm-hmm. Um, I just may not expect as much. And that may be, so this is when I go deep into like, why am I the way I am and why do I do this? Um, I don't enjoy Mm -hmm. being disappointed. Oh, I feel you. Right? (laughs) Well, define disappointment though. Like. Because your disappointment isn't the people's next to you disappointment. The way I show up, I just know me as a friend. Mm Mm-hmm. Like the last on my back, and if I need you in that moment, and I need your last, and you can't, you're not able to give that to me. Cindy, I'm gonna be like, what the? F- what is this friendship? When you say last, are you talking about like Wonder Woman last hole or? Okay, definitely Wonder Woman. Everything. Okay. If I know that I'm a friend that is like, I'm down. You're calling me 2 a.m. Mm-hmm. You're on the street corner with a breakdown. I know that I am. Glasses on mm-hmm. in the car, room, room. Yeah, and I'm expecting that from you. You don't get that to me. Yeah, that's gonna be a problem. So, how do you readjust your expectation of people when you realize they're not holding you to the same standard that you've held them in your life? I understand that others have their lives going on, mm-hmm. that they may have friends that they may hold to a different category as well Mm -hmm. that's just kind of how I think about it and I don't take a lot personally Mm -hmm. Um, which takes practice yes yeah because I try my best to think outside of my head at all times Mm -hmm. do you be in your head a lot yeah okay all right yeah because I'm thinking what I'm thinking but I'm also like what could they be going through and what could they be thinking and why may they be exactly there's all those layers because (laughs) you may be taking something so personally like what the and you don't know that this person just lost somebody so close you just don't know things happen i gave out two hugs to women who lost their grandparents this weekend you see yeah and i I had to give them a follow-up hug because when i found out i try not to hug people anymore Mm. it's been weird since covid Mm. And sometimes people take advantage of like my uh, quality of hugs. You said what? Germs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you whispering germs, yo. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, nah, I still feel for people, but I just, I be careful where I bleed. I don't get to yes. bleeding hard for a lot of folks. It's like, do I bleed for you? Mm-hmm. In words, yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But. I, I do still have a whole day ahead of me, depending on who you are. Because you're not, just because you've come through my life doesn't mean you're a part of my life. So yes. Some people are just coming Major. through, and that's okay. And that's important to know. Have you had talks with your friends about this? Or the friends that dynamics have changed? Oh. Or did you just realize, like, this might be a waste of words, so I should be careful about how invested I am in this conversation? Um, we, my friends and I have conversations about the way we show up. Mm-hmm. Um, I How have many friends. I don't have a large friend group. But they're important. But they're important. So it's the quality. Very much the quality. Okay. Very important. Okay. I have friend, I have had a friend group mm-hmm. that no longer associates themselves with each other. Oh. But we are still friends. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Um, 
and that it's was a little messy. trick. That was a little. Tr- it's not messy. It, it was, was a little tricky in the beginning. Okay. I wouldn't say it was messy in the beginning, but I would say it's been. tricky. Because, again, boundaries is important. Mm-hmm. So what you're not going to do, y'all have your issues. What mm-hmm. you're not going to do is bash talk. Each other in front of each, And we're not doing that. Yeah, yeah, come on. I can't kiki like that. Yeah, I like this That's person. not what we're doing. Yeah, you used to like this person. I don't want to. Like, don't mess we don't up do that. <laughs> um, but we do stand in the fact that we each had our own separate relationship outside mm-hmm. of, of our group relationship. This is giving very ten toes down. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's a good thing. Thanks. Yeah, no, no problem. Yeah. You, you know, know you I should be proud be. of yourself. Thank you. So, well, you know, I, I take pride in that. Like, mm-hmm. we had our own separate relationships. So, that doesn't mean just because the whole group isn't with each other anymore, it doesn't mean that we can't continue mm-hmm. what we started individually for ourselves. Yeah. Um, I have a friend that just seems to have no time for anything. And if you watch this, you know who you are. I feel like your friends are going to laugh at this point. So, she. <laughs> Um, mm-hmm. But I appreciate the times where she randomly just out of the blue just texts me and I'm like, oh wow, she thought about me and I'm just I'm thankful and I'm grateful because I do know she's busy. Yeah. Um, so, so I do get in my feelings and when I do, I send that text. <laughs> so where you been at? I'm in my feelings. Oh, that's a good text. That's not a rude. You text. know. Yeah. So I think everyone's, we're pretty open. Everyone's version of Kim Father is just it's different, different. Yeah. and it's important to understand that nobody yeah. thinks like you. Not everybody thinks like you. They're not supposed to. My mom, my mom loves me. I'm like her world, and I love her back. But when people love too hard, sometimes you do got to give them a lot of space. And my mom's one of those people. Mm. I'll do anything for my mom. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> but <laughs> you heard that? Government's <laughs> listening. <laughs> but. Because of that, we have... It's not a strained relationship. We have an understanding that you loving me hard doesn't mean that I have to listen to every suggestion that you make, even though you care for me. And I know it comes from a good place. And me being her son, her number one is what she's called me, I do have to respect and accept that love, but take it in the way that I'm able to accept it. Mm-hmm. Which a lot of people don't get to have that relationship with their parents. Wow. Does she annoy the hell out of me? Yes. She's so good at it. (laughs) But, like, what would life be if I never had that anymore in my life? So, you know, these are things that I think about in my free time. Wow. Yeah. How long did it take for you all to get to that space and her get to an understanding? You remember when we were in college, my mom was a helicopter mom. Yeah. Calling me all the time, everything else. And I was like, hey, man, this got to stop. What you mean? It says it's got to stop. Um, I get it. She's Jamaican. Yeah. And I'm her rainbow child. I just found out about that. I didn't know. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, that would have been information to know. Yeah. I'm, you wow. can share that with everybody. Yeah. That's your mom's personal experience. So well, no. Like, well, you said you just found out. Yeah, I found out I was a rainbow child. Well, I found out the term rainbow child three weeks ago. So I found when out you I was found a that child out right before college. Wow. Yeah. So having an understanding mm-hmm. of that the position that you are in mm-hmm. do you, off do you of want that, to what a rainbow child um, is? There was, from what I remember and recall, mm-hmm. there was mm-hmm. a prior sibling mm-hmm. before. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, we lost them. Yeah, she didn't make it. And yeah. So I always consider. Thing. I always say that I have more siblings. Mm-hmm. So most people it's like, oh, you have these siblings. I have one adopted sister and I have two sisters. So technically I have four because the one that didn't make it. So I am for both my parents, the second child, mm-hmm. which is crazy yeah. when you think about it. Because, yeah. you know, you got the Lamb of Blood over the doorway oh, story man. from the Bible. I think about that often. Like, dang, I was good. Thank you. You remember that story? That is, I'm so I'm still on the fact that you're kind of just learning this term mm-hmm. and how that may have well, changed I knew, things. I for knew you. what it was. It didn't change things. Okay, for me. it didn't change things for me because like 
Well, when you say change things for me, what do you mean? In my mind, did it give? Do you feel like it gave you a better understanding of why your mom was the way she was? And no, no. Okay, well, my mom was just gonna be that way because she way, loves hard. No, no, she <laughs> loves hard. She loves hard. That's, yes, she loves hard. Um, sorry to her though. I, I'm that was very heartbreaking mm-hmm. when I found out she went through that. Mm-hmm. But you know, even with that being said, my dad stuck with her. And, you know, when that happens, people don't tend to stick with each other. So that was number one. And number two, they were able to bring me into this world and raise me the best that they could. Now, did they do a great job? They did the best that they could. And that's usually what I focus on. You feel me? It's I'm not I'm not going to demand a debt from people who don't have it in a system that doesn't make it. So, yeah. Bye. And both your parents are from Jamaica. Both Jamaican. Um, I always, this girl shares this into so many things. Mm-hmm. Um, I was having a conversation with my cousin the other day. Yeah. And we, I was explaining to her, I said, you know, auntie only knows what she knows. Mm-hmm. But our parents were raised off of survival. <laughs> yeah. And they stuck to it. Literal survival. So yeah. the fact that we're here. Mm-hmm. Now, granted. You know, there's some things that could shift. <laughs> we know there's some things that could shift. Did your parents recommend therapy or did you choose to go into therapy? Oh, this is a whole nother conversation. Yeah. Like, we're never. Yeah, um, I, just, I gotta ask because that fast. Not me. that. Okay, so not that my parents don't know mm-hmm. what therapy is, don't are opposed to it or anything, but it will never be on the forefront mm-hmm. of their mind to be like, hey, have you considered. Therapy? Did you ever see any of my posts about therapy or folks getting therapy or help or anything like yes. that at that time? Yes. Was that encouraging for you? Um, it was. I think it gave me more comfort. Oh. Um, okay. just to kind of be like, a little reassuring. I'm always, I'm always you know? surprised when I hear these stories. Just a little like, reassuring, like, okay, because uh-huh. you get nervous. Because first of all, it's a whole other relationship you're building with this new random person. Mm-hmm. By the way, it was virtual. I don't mm-hmm. like it. So, but, so you went into therapy around the pandemic? Yes. Okay. Yes. So that's for virtual me, was like big. I'm not in love with the virtual life. In but terms do you of, feel there's a lack of interaction and exchanging of energies. There, I'm like, it's different when you're in a room. Uh-huh. The energy with the person, the vibe. Yeah, you can feel it. Is there mm-hmm. that block? That technology is a blocker of that to me. Mm-hmm. It might work for somebody else. Yeah. Um, but there's like a slight disconnect for me. Mm-hmm. So I would definitely rather sit here like this mm-hmm. on my service. That's sure. a chitty chat. Yeah. But I understand why people would want to do virtual. You know, their job is still is still work for everybody yeah. across the board. Love the convenience yeah. of it, and then you may you know may not be able to there's all these the reasons why virtual is a great mm-hmm. a great option yeah. um i just know for myself your experience was your experience and it wasn't terrible or anything yeah, it's but, just i just know the preference yeah 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 i like to buy okay well, then, <laughs> i got you i got you if that makes any sense mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but yeah my parents would never be like oh go to therapy yeah do they believe in therapy I feel like this is personal. Just to let you know, I had a conversation with my mom the Christmas before last at the table with my aunt, who's a nurse. And my mom was like, I'm too old for therapy. And I was like, I was like, girl, your son's been doing this work for this long. You're too old for therapy. But then I was just like, I also found out that she went to therapy back in the day. Mm. And therapy back in the day compared to what therapy is now. I'd be telling myself I was too old for therapy too. I came for that. <laughs> she only knew what she knew. Yeah. And so she knew that she didn't want to go back. Yeah. And she she feels that she's self managed. You know, observations may say opposite, but it's still your life that you're living. Yes. And therapy is only as effective as the person who wants to do the work and show up and actually want yes. it in their life. So Yes. Yeah. Um, I think as children of immigrants, mm-hmm. these conversations can be tough. Yeah. Um, With them directly. I'll do this on camera directly. Oof. Pick and choose who I'm about to have this conversation Oof. with. And that's like that's like something you got to spread out along week. Yes. Like you got to be careful about. You don't want to give too much good advice to the right person, 
and they're not in the right place to take it because yes. now it goes from advice to I'm telling you what to do and advice should only just be that advice yeah yeah and telling you what to do isn't me telling you what to do it's your feeling like who are you to tell me what to do and it's like nah bro that's that's never what it's about Ooh, yeah I feel like this is a great convo for you right now. I think as you're talking, I'm just like part of the reason mm-hmm. why I ended up going into the mental health space. Okay. Um, not only was it that, you know, I would love for the children to see somebody that looked like them. Mm-hmm. Black or locks. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> but also for children like me who are first generation, uh-huh. um, it's, I can only speak from my experience as a first generation and just the pressures, um, families not believing or understanding what therapy is, them being opposed to every type of advice you could ever give them in life. Mm-hmm. Even though the answer might be right in front of them, mm-hmm. um, being the eldest daughter in these, <laughs> you know, in this immigrant family, it's a lot mm-hmm. to take on. Yeah, it's a lot to process. Um, we often don't have the hard conversations. Sorry, I was just admiring the lotion up on my legs. Good job. Man. Y'all, you told me to put it. He said my elbows is ashy. I didn't say it was ashy. <laughs> I said I don't want you to get caught slipping. I was like, I got the cocoa butter for you. Cameras pick up everything. You don't get to hide on camera anymore. My dad used to always say, when I was on the phone, look at your, let me see in between your fingers. <laughs> and I'd be like, how you know? <laughs> how you know? Oh my gosh, so now I try to make sure that joke is moisturized. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to also be a person that was a representation of them. They could see me mm-hmm. and understand that I may have had experiences like them. Yeah. Because what is therapy to an immigrant from Nigeria? What is therapy to an immigrant from Jamaica who only knows hardship? And mm-hmm. They they just know how to survive. They know mm-hmm. how to work. And you are brought up in that too. They may have had to kill some folks. Like they may have had to do some things they're not too proud of yeah. to make it over here. Yeah. They may have had to put up with things that no person should ever have to deal with to protect to protect that check for their families. Yes. So, yeah. And you grow up mm-hmm. and you're like, why are they berating me? Why are they so harsh? Why are they just tough? Yeah. They're just tough. And then yeah. you grow up and just, you only know toughness. Yeah, they're a product of the environment. Yes. Yeah. And so here I am learning so many things. Mm-hmm. You know, born in the U.S., but raised in, for me, two different cultures. And just trying to maneuver. Mm-hmm. Did those cultures ever clash? Nigerian, um, Jamaican? Or did they blend really well? I think about stuff like that. I think, for the most part, foundation-wise, mm-hmm. they blend very well. Very yeah. heavy on respecting, you know, families, elders, parents, um... All of that stuff, I mm-hmm. think, naturally, yes. Yeah. Um, trying to think of a clash. The main clash for me personally would be my mom is just, and she kind of different, but she's just a very, mm-hmm. like, relaxed individual. Like nothing bothers her. Mm-hmm. She's okay with everything. Everything is fine, and I'm like. Everything is not fine. <laughs> I'm very, but then sometimes I'm like, is that the Nigeria in me? <laughs> like, tying up. Like, what is going on? Um, but I think the base foundation, yes. Everything was indeed not fine. It was not. And why are you ignoring all of the things? I'm, I'm confusion. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. I got you. I think for the most part, okay. foundational. Yes. That was, this is a hell of a a side note that we took a side note. I know. It could be so many things. But you know, a side note tangent is yeah. me. And that's why I'm on this today. Really? Yeah. Okay. This is so very much me. See, now you're going to have to come back to have more conversations. I'm totally down. Because that's, that's what that says. That says, you know, I can do this. I, I like you here. I don't mind. These cameras yeah. are a little intimidating, y'all. Are they? 
You think so? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They looking at the camera like they're real people, and I was like, "Nah, it's just to bring them into your world for a little bit." Yeah, it's cool. They only get to visit for the hour or two that we chat, and that's like it. This. Yeah, I'm gonna cut up mad great clips for you to share on your social media. It's gonna be great. All the marketing, all the strategies. The, oh, you got time? This is you. Yeah. <laughs> you got next, cut. <laughs> this, is, this is really. This is dope. What um, when it comes to the company that you're working for. Right. Mm-hmm. I, well, you're still there. Mm-hmm. I am. Do you think those five years prepared you to become a social worker? Ooh, that's a great question. You know, I never really thought about this. Um, you gotta say the company. I gotta say the company again because we're at a different part of the interview. Just to remind them. Unless you don't feel comfortable sharing it again. Like, oh, they should have picked up on it before. Y'all should have listened to it. It's like, no. <laughs> yeah, so the Head Start program that I do work for, and I have worked for the last, it will be six years in December. Okay, congrats. Um, thanks. Five. You know, I'm loyal. <laughs> so I don't need to be any work. But, um. <laughs> I mean, they, they treat you in a way that makes you want to be loyal. Yes, I do appreciate them. I think that, um,. I will say, education and the mental health, I'm still trying to, it's like two different worlds almost. Uh, how so? But it's like not at the same time, if that makes sense. I'm listening. Um, education side, I am looking and concerned about, okay, are the children, what's the fire and motor skills? Are they learning to pronounce X, Y, Z, A, B, C, one, two, three, blah. All right, you got to do the motor skills in terms of what you're working for. You know, fine motor skills, large motor skills. Okay. Um, what are the skills cognitively? You know, are they able to repeat? Mm-hmm. Are they able to follow one, two, or three step instructions? Mm-hmm. I'm looking at all this stuff at that age anyway, four to five. Yeah. Um, okay, are they reading? That's great. If they're not, are they able to identify the letters in their name? Mm-hmm. Those types of things, you know, regular educational stuff. All right, we don't. Um, oh, I'm sorry, you don't know. Yeah, you're educated. Because this is in the mental health space. Yeah. All right, cool. So, yeah, we ain't going to dig too deep. Mm-hmm. But those generally yeah. the types of things we're looking at. Mathematics, mm-hmm. are they able to count sequentially? Are they able to do patterns? What um, do these things define developmental-wise? Yeah, so we are looking for, are, and I, we don't even like this phrase, but are they on the normal course developmentally for a child their age? Mm-hmm. Um, is there a reason you don't like those words? Because what is normal mm-hmm. is what I always said. Yeah. What is normal for real? Yeah. Um, so that's why even my manager should be like, eh. Mm. What is normal? I got you. Um, we're very much big on that. <laughs> um, so we kind of look at those things and are there any red flags to where we feel as though, okay, the child needs extra, extra support in X, Y, and Z. And then some of that stuff does bleed into... I'm noticing that social emotionally, this child is very much detached. Mm-hmm. What is going on here? They'll play alongside, but they don't play with. Um, if anyone gets too close, they seem to have some type of episode. And that's when I kind of like start my switch. The and I'm like. Episode. Harry. Oh, episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Crying, screaming, don't want anybody to touch them, be near them, mm-hmm. but also not able to express what their needs are in okay. that moment. Okay. That's big as well. So, also, not being able to express it is considered a part of the episode, yes. not just the reaction. Yes. Okay. Yes. And are they able to self regulate? Mm-hmm. That's also big. Okay, now um, you have to define the whole so regulation. So they have that their, like, just like we as adults, we have our emotions, but we may do things to help us self-regulate and get back to where we're normally functioning. Like raising your hands above your head. Taking a long, deep breath, emptying your nose, out your mouth, all that stuff. Okay. Hugging, holding yourself. Yeah. Um, we look at children and we see during those moments of them being upset, 
or them being sad. They may be screaming. They may be crying. What do they do mm-hmm. to help self-regulate? And that means that may be them coming to the teacher mm-hmm. to help them. Mm-hmm. That may be them going to a cozy corner and holding a soft stuffed animal. That may some may have the language and they'll be like, I didn't like X, Y, and Z. But we're looking at all of that and because to break down the tension in their bodies. Yes. Okay. And to kind of slow themselves down. And to have them not react, mm-hmm. not just to react. Yeah. Um, and we often find that children that have a lack of language mm-hmm. often are the children that are screaming, that are using their hands, mm-hmm. um, that are using their mouths to communicate um, wow. because they do not have the language. Ah, throwing in an impatient parent into this process, mm-hmm. how does that hurt or help the process? Um, impatient parent, <clears throat> meaning they know their child and they're irritated with the way their child does things, or they don't know their child very well and they just don't know what's going Let's on. Let's do the first one, then we'll do the second one. Okay, so... Because you're taking us into your world, so I want to make sure you paint that picture correctly. Um, I'm learning a lot from you right now. Really? Yeah. Okay, so what was the first one again? Oh, Lord. Impatient parent. Impatient parent. And you brought up one category and then the other category. What was the first category? The first category was they know their child super well and they're tired okay. of what they're doing. And the second one was they don't know their child that well and they're annoyed by what they're doing. Okay. So usually in a moment of the first scenario, they know their child, they're impatient. And I- um, for example, we had a little child um, been going with us we've known him for maybe over a year or so we just noticed that he's been going into screaming episodes he needs to be next to a teacher 24 7 Mm -hmm. he wants to be held 24 7 yeah and that was a big change now we know he doesn't really have much language Mm -hmm. um so you came in with that knowledge came in with that knowledge we knew that but he never acted out in the sense of screaming crying like nonstop. When I say nonstop, I mean for hours at a time. He yeah. never used to do that. Um, so is that a new thing that's developed? That was something new that we noticed that has developed. Oh. And um, parents were very impatient about it. They're like, I don't know what's going on. I don't understand. I'm tired of being called. Oh. Stop calling me. <laughs> because there's only so much I can do. Number one, yeah. I'm not beating your child. Yeah. Oh, they're talking about you. They were calling you. Yeah. Oh. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not beating your child. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not putting your child on timeout. Yeah. Um, I'm not taking things away from your child. Is like, that what they were doing? That's what they. they what they suggested. That's what they suggested. Mm-hmm. What they're doing at home, who knows? Mm-hmm. I have not seen or witnessed anything that would tell me that they are being. For you, as a professional, what was the better version of their suggestions? What about? Ooh, what is a better version of their suggestions? Mm-hmm. Now, although this child cannot does not have much expressive language, this child understands. Okay. So he knows. I cannot be with you twenty four seven. We do have other friends yeah. that need to be taken care of. That you share your time. That with. I share my time with. But I had also said to mom and dad. Has there been a change at home Mm -hmm. that we are not aware of that has happened within the last few months? Mm -hmm. Because this is very new behavior. Yeah. And new behavior is usually signs that something has changed, whether the parents noticed it or not. Ding, ding, ding. Okay. All right. So after having that conversation, we have learned mom and dad have separated. Oh, which is the reference from what you said earlier. I got you. Yes. Mom and dad has separated and... Whatever their dad usually is the one we are in contact with. He comes and picks up. He comes and drops off. That's our number one um, communication. Dad. We re- yeah. It's the number one communication. Dad. You see, you see how we're we're doing the full circle. Okay. <laughs> see, I personally have never seen mom. The teacher of that classroom has seen mom once. In the whole span of so, dad is managing the children side of yes. the family. Yes. Okay. It seems so. Mm-hmm. Um, so within that split, time being spent with each parent has changed. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just a lot for a child to be going through all those changes. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think emotionally, he needed more. He wanted to be beside. 
he's losing more time with whatever parent. I'm not sure how they split up whatever they're doing. I don't know what their hours are. I don't know what the time is. But that split, timeline-wise, mm-hmm. made full sense. Do you mind if I say something? Go ahead. Do you think it's unfair that women can't be viewed in the conversation as not a mother? Do I think... It's unfair. It's unfair. Because when we had the conversation, it's mm-hmm. like, well, where's mom? Mm-hmm. Because dad's doing everything. And it's like, well, do we make spaces to accept that some moms aren't moms? And it's okay for the dad to be the person who manages the ch- the child side of things. I think that is great, mm-hmm. personally. But um, from a society standpoint and a conversation standpoint... Women don't get breaks. Women don't get They're breaks. They're always the mom. Yeah. But in this situation, I don't know if it's safe to say it's unfair to the dad, but it's unfair what it's doing to the child in this developmental moment. Yes. Okay. Yes. What are your feelings on this? My feelings are... Because we don't talk about that much. <sighs> Ooh, it's a sigh. I know. I'm trying to like process what I'm saying. My feelings, at least in this situation... You're not here to be professional. Am I even professional in real life? I don't know. That's a good question. But it's nice. You do a good job. Thanks. It's a start. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I feel as though... Mm-hmm. At least for mom... Yeah. I know you work... I mean, dad works too, but I know you work wherever you work. I know you work whatever hours you work, but you still need to find time for mm-hmm. your child. I go. I feel as though sometimes grace is given just because it's the mom. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, okay. Does that makes sense. What okay. I'm saying. No, no, I got you. Grace got is you. given just because it's the mom. Now, oh. if I was to switch roles and be like, Dad is just working. Yeah, that's all he does. We don't never see Dad. Yeah. Hit all the time. Like whoa, 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 whoa. But that's long trauma playing itself out. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Keep going, I got you. Um. So yeah, in this situation, it was kind of like we had a meeting with mom. Eventually, dad wasn't able to make it, but that was mm-hmm. our first time conversing with her. And she said, "Yes, we're separated. Yes, I work. You know, whatever hours I work, and we're just kind of like, is there time for you to spend with this child?" Now, what I also learned is they have two other children mm. that um have autism. Um. Well, what brand of autism? That I don't know. Because it's a she, spectrum, she didn't right? say, and I'm, we're not. It's a spectrum. It's a spectrum. Yeah. Not prying information out of families that you. they don't want to give. I got you. Um, Dang, how long into the process did you find this out? This child has been with us. What is it, the school year? So a year. Mm-hmm. And we're starting the new school year now. So we're learning this. By the way, we're learning this at the end of the school year. Like we having this meeting on the last day of the school year. Yeah, so dad really kept it close to his chest. So yeah. Again, what is the communication like? Although you are separating, mm-hmm. what is the communication like about with each other about this child, about your other children, mm-hmm. and what can you do to support them? within this space and it's Three difficult of them. yeah of them. and so do they share I'm, similar characteristics that i don't know okay because i don't know tax that as a for me no what is your title right now so my title is they changed my title okay i'm a big girl now <laughs> it's like nah. i'm an early learning specialist uh-huh. um so by technicality i usually am not directly having certain conversations with the families but because i know this child very well because yeah. i spend a lot of time with this child in the classroom i was a part of that meeting mm-hmm. um and i'm just the type of person that's very in the classroom i'm hands off because the children need to know who i am yeah so um i don't get to ask all those questions mm-hmm. that's possibly had an asked later yeah i'm not sure i hope so mm-hmm. um because i don't even know if the child had any you know, developmental tests or anything done as of yet either. Even though he doesn't have expressive language and, you know, he's having his um, emotional episodes, as I like to call them. So, mm-hmm. again, that's a part of supporting the families in the process. And again, these are also parents that are immigrants, so that's a whole nother. <laughs> Is it root tax or nationality or not? 
I don't want you to give away too much. I feel like, you know, the situation is the situation. The situation is a situation. Mm-hmm. But the culture okay, plays let me just be blank and honest. The culture plays into it. Culture plays into a lot. Yeah. I am, you know, Nigerian, Jamaican, if you all didn't know. Mm-hmm. Um, this family was from West Africa, mm-hmm. not Nigeria. But oftentimes, again, a lot of these things are overlooked. Yeah. Parents are saying they're having a conversation with their children when I know that the children don't even have the reception. <laughs> and that's because the parents are telling the kids what to do. That's not a conversation. And then does the child understand what you're saying? Yeah. And then when a kid, when a child, when a parent does decide to have a conversation with a kid, the kid doesn't know how to have the conversation with the parent because now you're telling me I'm supposed to all of a sudden be open and honest with you about things when I've grown up and been raised to be told what to do and my only response should be yes or no so it's yeah. a lot it's a, it's a lot and how um, old are they? five four five so this child is four okay because I know that's like your yeah this child is four age. years old yeah um they're only four yeah, <laughs> I got you. So it's it's a lot. I think you know the parents are learning a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, they're trying to figure out how to juggle yeah. everything. Um, I understand. You know, when we live in America, we have to work, 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 work. If you don't work, you don't eat. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, so I don't have kids. What do you mean? I. Talking about your final man yet, but all, all these shots. Sorry, kids. <laughs> because it's a lot. Mm-hmm. It's a lot. It's a kids lot. Expensive. The children are expensive. Yeah. And then Child you have care. to spend time. Child care. Emotions. Yeah. Energy. And emotional care. And Ooh. energy care. Because when I go home yeah. and if I decide that I'm just laying, mm-hmm. I can do that. Yeah. I don't have no lots of feeding for yeah. my own. And groceries are expensive. Yeah. So, I I get it. So that's where we're in place to help support the families in how do we approach the situation? Yeah. Where do we look for resources to help you to help your child? <laughs> um, not everybody's receptive. Again. So what those resources look like outside of the work you've done so far? Because your work is strictly in house and in the school. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. So what are the other resources outside so, of that you're allowed to suggest? Um, we can have them go through, uh, we have a program called Infants and Toddlers that they can come and get screened, the children can get screening. Mm-hmm. Um, if we feel like there are some developmental support that they need. Yeah. Um, Is there an age um, um, ceiling for that age wise? I think they still, they may still be like five okay. for our group so anyway. There's, so there's like just an, an early like you have this that early, little early childhood yeah. window um there may be other resources outside of that age range that i'm just not mm-hmm. that familiar with um we have child find okay. which i have to dig real deep into my brain to remember everything about child find but they also support and give other type of schooling so they'll get on the bus and go to school um to get the one-on-one support that they need you being comfortable enough to close your eyes to think about stuff is amazing to me. I have to. Because, like, when I think about stuff, I don't trust my environment <laughs> enough to just... Well, I trust where I am. I'll look up. I hope so. I look up, so at least I have my peripherals. And st- you don't put all these cameras in case camera to catch something. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you close your eyes, I'm like, I couldn't do that. It's like, we in your... To think, I'm going to look up. We're in your space. I'm going to look up. No, no, no. Even if I'm not in my space. Eyes. No, I look up. I be looking up. I be like... But I because if stuff's going south, I'm like, now nah, I want to react. So I'm gonna look up. I'm gonna look for it in the clouds. I'm gonna I'll crack it up. I don't even notice that. I just close. So I do close my eyes. Yeah. To like, I have to see and think. It's hot. It's yeah. crazy to me, yo. I'm really? like, oh, oh my god, yeah. The amount of things that can happen with my eyes closed. Nah. For two seconds. Yeah. Life's like that. No, you're right. Because I'm definitely the one that's like, where the exit at? That's me. Life's for sure. Like that. Yeah. Understood. Um, but yeah, there are resources out there to help. Any other resources, resources you'd remember. like to mention? I might got to add this later on the tape. You're going gonna to have to now come back for another interview and bring all those resources. Come back for another interview with a nice shirt. Yeah. I mean, another one. Yeah. Intentional. Oh, wait, do I do it this way? 
is it hard to separate your work from real life? Like, let's say you pull up to a family event and you see some kids and you be like, Oh, I'm all the time. I'm like, mm, that one. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm. All the time. Mm. All the time. All the time. Do you think you letting the parents know would make a difference in the child's development? Or sometimes you have to be careful with overstepping boundaries. Do you mean that within my work world or outside? Outside work world? your work world. Outside my work world, I am very sensitive mm-hmm. to things like that. Okay. I often don't give my opinion, thoughts, and or advice mm-hmm. unless I am being directly asked. Okay. Because it can be a slippery slope. Um, who are you? Mm-hmm. You don't know me in my situation. What do you know? And I'm not here to tell you that I got X, Y, and Z and da 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 da. Mm -hmm. But um, that can be that can be touchy. You gotta meet people where they are. So if then you don't know whether they're ready or not until they come in. You know what I mean? At at least for the outside world. Yeah. My inside work world, I can press a little bit, a little bit harder with that. Um, But I definitely see them. I look at children all the time and I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> that one would be my favorite. <laughs> you said, yeah, no, I see them. I see them. Oh, they, they everywhere. Oh, wow. yes. Yeah, no, I got you. All the time. I got you. All the time. All the time. Love it. <laughs> Very entertaining. Where can the people find you or do you want to be found or not found? You don't want your story. No, I get that, but it's up to you to share. If you if you don't want them to find you, because like, look, you doing this interview is to help and further the community, mm-hmm. but you don't need to talk to these people personally. All right. Your hair being this <laughs> wilds me. I'm just so I'm like really trying okay, to get into it, yo. So. Mm-hmm. I gotta think. I gotta think. We can go with no. We could come. All right, we're gonna we're gonna go with no. Yeah. For right now. But what's a resource that they can tap into (laughs) off of what you've spoken on today? That um for my families that have children, Mm -hmm. um, look into Head Start. I'm within PG County, Mm -hmm. and if you feel like you need education services for your child Mm -hmm. and or other support, yes. And what is the purpose of Head Start? The if you purpose, can define it in your own words and experience. For my own words and experience, the purpose of Head Start actually is to give educational support services to low-income mm-hmm. children um, as a way to prep them for kindergarten and schooling. Okay. That is technically what Head Start was made for. Mm-hmm. Um, it has also brought in... Do I? You said technically... Yes, because I'm saying that because they also services to help support the families um, with housing, um, with if they need mental health services. So we do give consultations to families. I think they get two or three free consultations and then our licensed social workers will help to provide them with resources outside of us Mm -hmm. to continue on with therapy and other things that they have. So... That's why I say. I just want to put my face in the frame real quick. Um, so you're working on becoming a social worker. Yes. So I started my internship in a couple of weeks mm-hmm. at a parent child clinic. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm excited for that. Um, Do you have any social work friends? I got a couple. Okay. Actually. They told you about the reality of how it really be being out there in the streets. In the streets. Doing the house checks. We are already in the streets. Yeah. So we just further in the streets. Yeah. But we're ready and we're prepared. But you didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I'm excited to kind of transition. Mm-hmm. And then eventually see how I can combine the two worlds the early child education space and the mental health space we should talk and we should yeah. talk you should meet my friend yay dr jones you should meet her pediatrician i love that and you should meet my friend brianna therapist the one that just got her stuff that's killing the game yes. i feel like i'm gonna build a consortium of folks that are working on it those that are they're already those that are transitioning out onto other things mm-hmm. and be like, all right, you guys all need to either start a group chat or start doing sit downs with folks 
to Take figure them, out talk through. like what's this gonna be like for you guys because mm. it's like it's nice like you're one of my numbers of people that have gone into therapy right because it's like we encourage we normalize it and it was comforting but with that being said with you admitting this to me i'm like yo that is super nice i'm so happy because oh. <laughs> like my work is behind an iron curtain mm-hmm. so i don't know who i'm reaching yeah. or when it reaches them i just know somewhere in the world someone was encouraged yes. and it helped them yes and I'm also interested in the people who had encouraged and it didn't help. Mm. Those are the people who I would love to have a conversation about because I think their experience is very real and valid. Yes. Like uh, the episodes that you saw me putting up this week mm-hmm. with my young boy. I haven't watched it yet. <sighs> you ain't seen them clips? Nah. <laughs> clips vicious. All right, that man, he um, went to therapy between ages, I think it was six till about 15 or 16. And he came out of the foster care system and it was a terrible experience for him. So since I met him, we told him that he has to get therapy because of uh, his bouts with ideations and stuff like that. But him having those bad experiences at such an early age, I could understand someone who says, I'm not going to go get therapy. Yeah. And I'm like, of course not. Your developmental years of six to, to 16? Yeah, that's major. Well, why should I have to give more time for this thing that I know doesn't work mm. and I have proof that it doesn't work and the adults didn't care enough to take my experience of coming out of the foster care system into consideration as they tried to help me. And I'm like, no, that's real. Real. Do I still want you to get help? Yes. But, yes. you know, I made the suggestion of reaching out to a therapist or folks who deal with folks that have come out of the foster care system or therapists that they themselves have come out of foster care system because relatability yes. is very important when matching people up yes. yeah big time i'm really glad we got to have this talk mm-hmm. yeah you gotta do better with friend. hitting folks back i'm sh- I covered it on my right comfort now. zone i did hit back yeah later and i said you were dodging for a while before we did this what did i say you're like, no, I don't know what I'm doing. You're like, I'm shy. I am. I'm not qualified. Let me close my eyes again. And I was like, nah, you've always been qualified. I believe in you. Thank it's you. really nice that I have someone that I could believe in that's doing such a great job. Thank you. You're welcome. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. Take me out of my comfort zone. Who is so out of my comfort zone? You got to start doing more of this. I think you're in a position to really build a platform with this, too. Showing your journey, the education part, having other professionals that might want to reach out to you and figuring out, you know, if you ever decide to do a private practice with the work that you're doing, what's the business end look like Mm -hmm. versus what's the relationship end look like? And then also figuring out what kind of relationship do you want to have with mental health as a professional that too yeah i'm still thinking yeah and you got time that's what time for what is it two years i got time two years that's how long the program runs two years or four technically Mm -hmm. three if you stay on track yes Mm. Well, let me tell you something. Okay. Oh. Okay. Whether this is going to be on camera or not. Yeah, when black people say that. <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you something. Let me, the reason, let me tell first you of something. all, I was supposed to have been started mm-hmm. internship since January. You want to get stuff? Catholic? Oh. Oh, tell me about that. That school. Dog. That I do not miss. Bruh. All right. So this is how it goes. You are supposed to talk to My your. Almost behind the light. Oh, it is? Yeah. I don't even. Where's mine? I keep it covered. My mom made copies of it. She was like, in case you lose it. <laughs> it's copy. She has the original. That's just a copy. That's just a copy. I'm right. cracking up. Yeah, Catholic. So Catholic it's time University to find America. Catholic the, University of America. V. Not that I hate it or anything. It's just. I, I adore certain people. I will say that. that Girl, have just been, say you're disappointed. And that have been advocates for me. I, yeah. Dr. Otu, I love you. And I owe you my first paycheck. I keep saying that. That's a problem. I love him. That's a problem that you need people to advocate for. Bro. Things to get done correctly. So, you get told that you're supposed to get into an internship. Politics. You get um, connected with who your field placement advisor is. So, that's different from your regular advisor. Open and close quotations. All right. So... I get I might won't say names even though you should but you shouldn't do I remember keep name anyway because I think it's classy not worth it I don't keep it classy mm-hmm. <laughs> 
I get paired up with this advisor. Cool. I let her know, hey, I need a field placement. But the issue is I need to keep my full-time job. Mm. So I don't care if it's after hours. I don't care if it's weekends, Mm -hmm. late nights. Mm -hmm. I just need to make sure I keep my job. I need income. Yeah. The response to me was Mm -hmm. everybody wants that. Black. Yeah, black lady. She's supposed to come be supporting me. That's exactly what she said. I said, oh, okay. How long ago was this? This was back in November, December. November, December-ish. Thank God for the people I work with. My manager was amazing. She said, oh, don't worry. I'm sending out hundreds of emails. We're going to find you a field no, placement. Can't focus, can't focus. My manager, love her, yeah. connected with somebody. The somebody she connected me with actually went to Catholic. Mm, wow. That worked. Did the interview. Mm. They said, we love you. Nice. Great. Start in the process. Cool. I'm emailing that advisor. I'm getting no responses Crazy. from December all the way to January, February. Crazy. So she is nothing. Crazy. Not a thing. Crazy. So they have to do a contract between Catholic and whatever agency you're working with. Yeah. Um, that takes time already. But also, you have delayed me because why are you not responding? Why are these people in positions to hold folks who want to develop hostage? That has always bothered me about the school when it comes to certain things. Why are you not responding to me? And I'm just emailing and, you and talking to myself. And there's no one that will really do anything about it. So I'm just like... Yeah. Okay, my friend says, you know what? Bump that. Email Frank. Um, Frank was also very helpful. He is the, I don't know, he's above whoever I was supposed to be dealing with. You love him. The camera say shout out to Frank. Shout out to Frank. What department? <sighs> Jules is too many on. things. No, 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 come on. You do this every day. You Frank, I have your Frank email, Joe, in here. Yeah. <laughs> Get wrestling for the Masters <laughs> program, Frank. Frank. Such a great guy. Your last name starts with a G, and I don't know how to pronounce it. I don't want to be rude. Just Frank is good. Just you don't got Frank, we love you. Yeah. Well, I love you, and yeah. I appreciate Just you what so much. Just what associated with, so you can feel more. Oh, he's associated with Catholic University's mm-hmm. um, School of Social Work. Okay. Okay? All right. He helps with the field placement, all that stuff. Perfect. Above. That's a great Frank great is shout great. Out. You've done Frank justice. Thank you. And I emailed him. I said, this is the situation, and what's going on? He said, don't worry. I'll take it over from here. So the school and the agency have been figuring out their mm-hmm. whatever documents they need to figure out. I have yet to hear from this advisor I'm supposed to hear from. But guess what I did hear? Mm. That the Tuesday before graduation, they weren't going to let me walk. <laughs> Why aren't you letting me walk? Because you have not completed whatever you're supposed to complete. But that's not my fault. That's the advisor's fault. That you've been complaining about all year. So, shout out to Dr. O'Toole. Did you send everything in an email? Oh. To show proof. Don't worry. I love that. Everything was documented. Love that. And I had a video meeting with the dean. Good. And Frank. Yeah. To express, I like this lady. Yeah. And why is she not responding to me? And And anybody that ever treats me like that will not prosper in life because I'm one of God's favorites and he don't put it on me. And that's where we left it. God's plan. Period. Yeah. And Dr. Osu made sure he called me at 11.30 p.m. to let me know that he already emailed the dean and everything's going to be fine and I will walk for graduation. And I love him. And that's why I owe him my first paycheck. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Yes. So, they, so I should have been done now, actually. Mm-hmm. I should have completed my hours now. But I'm starting September. So... I will be going through this process till. So, you, so till you've done your walk and you took the picture. I've done my walk. I took my pictures, everything. but I still have to continue everything. I just finished my 12 page paper for my last class. Mm-hmm. And yeah. So the internship's going to be the official end of everything. Yes. But you've done all the work. That but I've done all the other work that I yeah, need to do. So are you going to be a social worker or a therapist? I will be, I'll be a social worker first. Okay. Are you trying to fill it out to figure things out? Or? Yeah, like, what? Do I want to be a therapist? Mm-hmm. Do I want to work with adults as well? I know I'm working with children no matter what I do. And um, So I think I'm figuring it out. Okay. Um, I think if I am in the therapy space, I will for sure begin with children. Mm-hmm. And that's what this interest is going to help me kind of work through and decipher because I will have my direct clients and working with those children and their meeting with their families and stuff. So this should be fun. And again, this is stuff that I've done, but on the mental health space instead of the education space. So it's interesting to switch my brains. Yeah. 
All right, well, this has been another episode of Mental Health Monday here with my friend who's about to be a social worker who shall remain nameless. Um, thank you for showing up. Like, subscribe, Wait, did share. did I not say my name this whole time? Yeah, on purpose. I did that on purpose. Oh, you did? I mean, yeah. you can know my name. Nah. Then, then they'll be able to find you. It's like, it's right there. I'm trying to save you. I'm going to so. private my uh, account. That's, no, that's not. <laughs> social media is not fun if you do that. <laughs> it's just not. You gotta chill. <laughs> <laughs> you can find me. Don't worry. I'm cutting it off right here on that. It's. I'm just gonna laugh. Be like, you can do whatever you want. Say whatever you want. <laughs> okay, <boring>. bye. <laughs> <laughs>